everyone and welcome to the Writer's Corner show. We are on episode number 50 and today we're introducing a special guest, Leila Heyman, author of Because I Can. Don't go anywhere, we'll be back in a bit. Everyone and welcome to the Writers Corner live show. Here on the Writers Corner live show, we will introduce you to new authors to love, and also we you probably already have your favorite type of book, whether it's fiction or non-fiction. You never know. We can always introduce you to a brand new genre. So you will meet new as well as seasoned and aspiring authors on the show. And some of our more experienced authors will share the tips and tricks of how to get published right the first time. On the show, you will also get to hear the backstories from our authors, something that you won't find in their books. So if you're just joining us now, I'm your host, Projecti Lambanda. I'm a global goodwill ambassador and a live streaming advocate who loves to help brands, entrepreneurs and authors tell their stories and have a great online experience. Let me introduce my amazing co-host to you. Mary Elizabeth Jackson is an award-winning author of the Poolicious series. She is also right, currently working on a movie screenwrite play. Mary is also a the mother of three uh, beautiful inspirations. She's also a special needs and disability advocate and she lives in Nashville in the USA and I am in Cape Town, South Africa. So do let us know where you are joining us from. Hi Mary, how are you today? I'm great, how are you? I'm very well, can't complain at all. It's cold, mm. it's wintry, we're both wearing black today. No, but to, but it's hot here. I mean, we've been our index is supposed to get up over a hundred, so it's been um, it's it's very hot here. We've had a lot of rain, and uh, but I know you're freezing cold there. And uh, well, you know, we just kind of merge the weathers together would be perfect, wouldn't it? So um, we wouldn't be too cold or too hot, just right. Um, but I'm super excited about our guest today because um, not only is she an amazing writer. She is a singer songwriter as well. So she has a lot of talent and um, she's also a really good friend of mine. So I'm just so excited to have her on this morning and to share her, you know, with our audience and, and help people find her that might not have ever seen or heard of her before. I know, I know. So Layla is the daughter of legendary Woodstock's Melanie. Um, and she has been performing and touring since the age of eight years old. Isn't that amazing? Eight years she's, old. She's she's a very, she has a very interesting life, Layla does. She's got to write a book about it someday. <laughs> <laughs> so she's currently in Nashville with her family and she's still writing and creating music. Um, and she says she loves working with up and coming singers, songwriters, artists and help them to perfect their craft as well. And it sounds like she absolutely enjoys enjoys what she's doing. Shall we bring her on the show? Absolutely, yes. Let's do that. And let's say hello to Layla. We seem to, Mary, are you able to see her on screen? Because I'm not able to. No, I don't see her. Oh, there she is. Hello. There we go. Welcome to the show. Hi, Layla. Hi. I can. Um, oh, you're not, we can hear you. Hi. And that's Julie, crazy. I'm having difficult moments. 
Sure. You know what, Layla? Try and um, close it down and then open up your phone again using the same link and that should fix it i'm sure i'm i'm sure it's just a network issue you know what she's I, if she said she can't hear us she she didn't hear a word of what i was saying yeah, so, so, can, you her, can you send her a message you want me to send her a message you're going to send her a message Right. Yes, I'm quickly going to send her a message. Won't you just tell everyone a little bit about your book, Coolicious, while I do that? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, well, I, I mean, I'm excited because um, in about six weeks, my third book will be coming out. I'm just get, looking over the contracts today for it. Uh, Thornton and I will be signing contracts and looking forward to that yes. third book coming out in the series. I'm super excited about that. And um, it's, a, it's a children's series for babies up till this third one's going to go into like kindergarten age four five and six and um so it'll be soon in about six weeks it'll be released and it'll be on amazon and kindle and barnes and noble and um raven's quill press and wherever else we can uh, wherever else you can buy books so the first two books are you can purchase them for me right now but they are getting ready to be re-released with new design and everything i'm super excited about it that'll be following this third book coming out so i'm super excited and then um actually hope i hope into next year that um, Thornton Klein and I'll be um, releasing a middle grade reader that we have. We're super excited about that. We've decided to take the middle grade reader that will also be with Raven Squill Press as, as well. And that middle grade reader will um, be more like a graphic novel, which is for kids, not your graphic novel that uh, us older uh, folks grew up with. <laughs> it's more of like a comic book for kids. So, um, my um, one of my daughters will be illustrating the book and we're super excited about it because we've also written it into a screenplay as um, Virginia mentioned so that'll go into um, um, screenplay format as well so we're excited about that and I would encourage anybody out there who wants to write to write just start writing even if you're not sure what you're going to write um, a lot of times from the beginning of something to the end of it, it turns out to be something completely different than what you started with or what you even thought you were going into. Um, and that's okay because it actually goes where it's supposed to go. It's like the words really know what they want to do and what their intention is. And so um, I would inspire anybody who is thinking about it. Um, we all have a story within us. Even if we don't think that we do, your life is a story and someone else would like to hear about it. And, you know, we have those challenges in our life and we have lessons that we learn and trials and tribulations that prepare us to be able to help others and go, hey, you know what, I was there or I was in this place, maybe not just like yours, but I got through it and I'm on this other side now and you can do the same thing. And that's what we're meant to do in life. We're, we are meant to, part of our journey is to help others step over those thresholds of pain and suffering and, and hurt to get through it. And um, so we're all, um, we're not intended to do all our journeys by ourselves, are we? No, we're not. No, we're not. And, you know, sometimes I was talking about this earlier. Sometimes we think that, you know, we're all by ourselves. But mm -hmm. very often, little things that we can do locally can have a global impact. We never uh, know whose life we are touching by sharing our own experiences and stories. And right. so we should never hold back, you know, because sometimes people are going through stuff in life. We all do. Who doesn't? Right. And when people hear about our stories, we never know just what a positive impact that can have on someone else's life. Right. And, you know, um, you know, you, I've just gone through something very traumatic uh, in, in, our, in my life and in the life of my family, losing my dad and my aunt. And, you know, you have been through losing your father back at Christmas time. And so your reaching out to me through all of it was very um, helpful and supportive and really does make you feel like you are not alone. And it gives you that, gosh, I can do this. You know, I, I can get through this because you have that comfort from someone else, even if it's uh, if it's a friend. I mean, you and I live continents away from each other, but with the beautiful technology that we have, um, it allows us to feel like we're not even that far away from one another, you know? 
Um, and it's so funny. I was talking to Layla this morning. She didn't even know that you were in South Africa. She, she thought you were local. <laughs> I was like, no, guess what? <laughs> She's not here. So um, I'm just looking to see, is she, is she able to come back on? I can see her now. So let's see if she's okay. able to, to hear us this time. Um, if not, we'll go, but we'll go with audio only. I'm not quite sure what it is that's going on right now. But you know what? These technical glitches happen, and we just have to run with it. And uh, if we have to go by voice only. So I'm going to try something now. Um, if you can try and talk to Layla, I'm going to refresh my screen and see whether I can see her now. Um, we just seem to be having a technical glitch here, but let's just go with it and okay. let's see what we can do. Hey, Layla, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I know she's trying to get back on. I see she's I see she's trying to do that, yes. Yes. If she can hear us, we can just go with the audio. Um because that works perfectly well too. But I somehow get the feeling that Layla is not able to hear us either. Um okay. the technical gremlins are really challenging us today, aren't they? Yeah, they're really interfering. I, she's communicating me, with me right now. Um, she's like, I'm so sorry. It's okay, I said. I'm, say, I'm asking her if she can hear us. I know, I want her to come on. And you know, it's really cool. Remember Ted Myers that we had on, um, gosh, we had Ted on months ago. And he knows Layla's mom because he was in rock and roll forever. So remember right. we were talking about that. And um, I wanted to tell Layla that... Uh, he knows. So she, Layla wrote a song and it's a lullaby and it's just absolutely, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And so um, her brother is laying down the tracks and all the sound, the music for it. And my, my girls are actually recording the song. And oh, wow. um, yeah, we're really excited about it. And then Layla and I are going to write the children's book to go with it. So we're super excited about it. And um, it's very, it's precious. She's, she, she's really, um, she's got a real gift for writing and, um, um, I hope that she will. I hope she'll be very, very successful with it. So, oh, there I can hear. Her. Are you on, Leah? Oh, yeah. I'm actually now. My daughter. I'm on her um, iPad. <laughs> okay, so we can hear you, but we can't see you. So that's okay. We're gonna go with audio. Are you okay with that? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, uh, thank you, Anna Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> that's her brilliant daughter in the back. All teenagers are born with technology in their brain. You know. <laughs> I mean, they're just they're just wired for it. I just if I don't understand something, I just hand it to Alyssa or Lily. Oh, here you deal with it. I don't even know what to do. You just tell me what to do with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But unfortunately, I can't see you guys, but uh, I can hear you now. So that's okay. Good. That's good. Yeah. So I was just listen. I was just telling um, Rajetti that you know we interviewed a guy about a month ago, an author, fellow author. Ted Myers is his name, and he knows your mom. And he knew your mom and dad from back in the day because he's been a rock and roll forever and ever and ever, but he's retired now. So isn't that cool? Oh, wow. I wrote, yeah, I wrote down the agency that he used to work with, but I, and I, I meant to text it to you. So I've got to find where I, now I got to find where I wrote it down. So, <laughs> but oh, I my. did. <laughs> yeah. So. So I, I oh apologize for the delay. No, it's okay. So go ahead. So we want to jump right in with you because yes, we some time has been eaten up in your interview, and I'm sorry about that. And and I, technology, like Brigetti called it, the technology gremlins have uh, come into play for us today. But um, we're we're so excited you're here. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. So what were you guys talking about before? Because I could only hear very minimal clips. Oh, okay. Well, I was talking about, um, I just went ahead and started talking about stuff going on. And then I said that you were, um, uh, Brigetti read your bio and, um, that you no. are a singer. Oh, go ahead. What? Oh yeah. So, okay. So I didn't know if you had gotten into what, I, so yes, my, my kind of where I came from and where I'm going. Yes. And we I, and I said to her, you have to write a book about your journey because you have a very interesting journey. And it's not like I was saying, I was encouraging people to write because we all have a story and you have a story that's a little bit different because not everybody grew up with a famous mom and was on the road living out of hotels and limousines and, you know, a nanny. And, you know, you, you have that sort of life you and your brother and sister did. And it's very different than everyone else. It's different than what your kids are growing up with, you know? Yes. Well, yes. And I mean, 
I'd like to think of it as that was another part of schooling that I've had that many others, I guess, have not. And it, it would be an interesting journey to, to take on and write about because uh, I think a lot of things that people think are glamorous about growing up with a rock and roll mom, sometimes uh, I guess people don't quite understand there is a great responsibility with being born into that because mm -hmm. it's not just your mother. It's she is also a celebrity and people look up to her. So if you if one day we were having some sort of difficult time, you know, it's still Melanie and on the go and it's still me being, you know, the daughter of and and what I do in my life for singing and music you know, revolves around every little aspect of our relationship. So, um, which makes it an interesting twist with a mom and a daughter. <laughs> yeah. So Layla, can I ask you something? Generally speaking, you know, we, most times we want to do something completely opposite of what our parents did, but you kind of have mixed the two a little bit. Um, I mean, you've become a singer songwriter yourself. But yes. did you, did your lifestyle make you want to do something, stabilize your children's life um, a bit more? Did that influence your decision to have a, a home base? I would definitely say yes. But at the same time, I mean, I, I absolutely, you know, enjoyed all the journey that I've had in my life growing up. But I, I knew that it was a good, it was, I really wanted to have a home base. And Nashville was a great place because with all the, you know, musicians and writers and, and now, you know, with TV and theater and film coming here, you know, and I, I just thought this would be a really artistic, creative place to raise a family without necessarily having to journey everywhere so they can get a taste of it a little bit, you know, all over from where we are living. And then also what I can, you know, introduce into their lives. And of course, um, being able to take them to places. And actually uh, in August, you know, we're all going to be hopefully still doing this Woodstock performance. Um, there's been so much back and forth on that. But you know, if that's a, a go, they're going to all come with me and they're going to perform on stage with me. So they get, they have had, and my daughter, Annalisa and Christiana, my other daughter, they've had a taste of getting to go on the road with my mom. So they've seen ins and outs and I love that, but I do love that, you know, we are basically, you know, home is Nashville. I mean, we moved here from Florida and uh, my, my husband's a native Floridian. Um, but we have the lake here and I just thought this was a great creative place to raise children and, you know, be able to continue creating myself and through that, yeah. like meeting Mary and, um, you know, and writing this children's book with, uh, Thornton Klein and, um, just all the new adventures. Uh, I mean, I started back to school because this last year, because I wanted to learn more about recording. I felt like I knew so much about the industry but I really wanted to just grow as um, a singer songwriter and be able to on the fly throw down, uh, you know, a great melody and be able to create around it and put out a demo quickly. Um, I, I just feel like, you know, as an artist, I will always be. And then as a creator, I'll always be. But um, I just think that there's always more to learn and you know it's just it kind of throws everything in motion to just keep moving forward you know and i think that's really important as a an artist and as a writer and you know never giving up and just continuing on in your journey so then how did you get into writing i always love hearing people's stories you know because everybody's got a story in them and yours is an exceptional one because you grow grew up in show in showbiz um, but that doesn't mean that everybody who grows up in showbiz writes their story. So what is it that made you want to write? Uh, music or songs? No, right. either. Books. You know, what? Oh, okay. Books. I mean, well, I guess when it comes to writing books, I've always written little poems and things and songs for my children as they grew up. And, um, I just felt like, I mean, I have many little short stories that I've made little songs to go with. And I just thought this would be 
a, a great, you know, outlet. And then when I met up with uh, Thornton, uh, you know, and we just got along so well and decided to write this book. And it was just, it was really a wonderful experience. And, but now I, I'm looking also back on so many times where, you know, I have all these ideas and now having this book published is just like the first step to realizing that all these other little ideas can become reality and children can get to experience, you know, the little visions that I've seen with my children growing up and um, why I wrote about things and why I wrote little poems about stuff. And, um, and then when it comes to music, I guess really we traveled so much on the road um, as I was, a, you know, a little girl. Um, the guitar became like my friend because, you know, we weren't just every day going to school. We were, had, you know, tutors or we were in and out of different places and um, writing kind of became an outlet for me. Um, and just with all the things that I got to see and experience and, you know, um, and talking, traveling and talking to many other people around the world and hearing their stories you know, I, I sometimes it would just hit me. This is a song. This is, you know, this is their adventure, but this is also a song and this adventure, you know. Um, and I and I've always just enjoyed all the way around seeing things in a way where I feel like I can share with other people that they can get it to. So I guess that's why I just continue to write in every aspect. And I did notice in your in your uh, part of your bio that you want to help up and coming singer songwriters and artists yes. um on their journey as well is that Absolutely. because you felt that your parents gave you a helping hand and so you want to give back i mean oh definitely that um i mean they gave me you know so many reasons to continue growing as an artist and um believing in me and i just feel like sometimes up and coming artists you know um they can be surrounded with uh, just immediate friends or family that, you know, are very supportive. And then, you know, they get out there and maybe their friends and family were telling them, oh, you know, your your pop or your country or your, you know, and I think it's really important for the artists themselves, no matter where they've grown up or what they've done to really experience and know who they are on a stage, because I think that's the biggest point that record companies and, um, you know, are, are, are wanting to see, they want to know that you know who you are and um, they don't want to have to make those decisions because there's too many people out there who do know who they are. So I think the younger kids um, really, uh, you know, I just love to talk to them and find out who, you know, what they really want to do, you know, without the influence of mom or dad or, you know, grandma or grandpa or, you know, and, uh, and writing, their stories, you know, and I think it's it's really amazing that so many young people out there are, you know, going out there and writing and trying to become the stars that they want to be. And I just love being a part of that process. I've actually worked with um, several people um, who are now, I mean, traveling and doing all sorts of stuff with their music and we've written together and, you know, we stay in touch and, and it just, I feel like I can be a solid person for someone who, you know, without having to ask an immediate family member, you know, I could be that person they can come to and say, what do you really think? And I could be that person that can give them the honest answer without, you know, constructive criticism. And I don't feel like they would take it, you know, like how if it came from your mom or dad, you know? Um, and I love the writing process, you know, I mean, it's just wonderful to see, you know, uh, somebody who's 16 years old, you know, and their stories. I mean, people kind of forget that, you know, just because they're 16, oh, what do they have to write about that kind of attitude? But they have a lot to write about. I mean, they're experiencing just as much as an, an adult life, but just in a different way. So we kind of have to nurture that as well, you know. Um, yeah. So, so Leila, tell me who's, you know, throughout your journey thus far, who was your biggest critic and who was your biggest supporter? Boy. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I think 
<laughs> Honestly, well, my mom and my dad, my dad especially, um, who I miss so much, he um, passed away in 2010. Um, he was ultimately like my complete cheering squad for whatever I wanted to do. Um, but he was always honest with me. And I think that's why I like to be, I just want to tell people how it really is because my dad wouldn't sugarcoat it, but at the same time, he was still there and I still knew I could go to him and get an honest answer about something. And I think that's what most artists truly want. They really want to be guided in, a, in, a, in the right way, in a positive way, but they want to know, you know, that they're not just doing something that, you know, oh, it's just a cute thing or whatever. They want to, they want to feel real. And I think that's what you, I had so much respect for my dad about is he would give me the honest answer and I would, I would understand why he gave me that answer. And I think that's really important. And, um, and my mom, of course, you know, and she's still my, my cheerleader for so many things and, um, and continuing in music and, you know, raising my children. She, she gives me, um, many praises for that because it's, it's not the easiest road. And Mary knows that, <laughs> um, when you have children and you're, uh, juggling being a creative person, it can, it can be a challenge sometimes, but, uh, it's worth it for sure. So. Yeah. Layla, Layla and I have many conversations about, uh, losing our mind, falling apart. Holy cow. How do we do this? You know, we, we've had many conversations about that crying because yeah. we, we both have so much, um, you know, when you're creative, there's kind of no boundaries to your creativity or your, I mean, you may not be able to do everything there is creative. I mean, I can't draw my children draw, but I could do stick figures and flowers, you know, right. but, <laughs> but when you're, when you're kind of more of a creative person, as opposed to like an academic, um, and there's no boundaries with either kind of person, but you, we want to keep growing and moving forward always. And there's not always that time, especially raising children to be able to find that time for writing. I know it's a challenge Layla finds as well as I do, you know, you've got to get into that space sometimes in peace and quiet in order for things to flow through. And she's learned as well as I have to be very efficient in our time with writing at times we have to be, you know, you might have to do it in the car rider line or you might have to do it at a doctor's appointment while you're waiting and you have to, you know, but for those big things, yeah. you really have to have that space and time to be able to do it. And, and we, we both have a lot of support in our families. I think um, even though there's still a lot of care that needs to go on with our kids and family, but you know, you really do. And I know Brigetti always asks that question, who's your biggest supporter, you know, in your life, because she knows as well as we do that, you know, you've got to have that support in order to really, I don't know, sometimes be able to do it. And then sometimes, you know, I just find my inner strength and I just know when all else fails and if I've had a letdown or something, I mean, the belief I have within myself, I think is um, a big part of any creative person continuing to, to go, I mean, and grow, you know, um, no matter who's around to support you, you have to believe in yourself. And I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's you just have to have that courage, you know, and that's what it is. And go. I, I just wanted to hit one more thing going back to um, working with different artists and things like that. Um, I that's something that after I finish with school, I'm, I'm going to really kind of pursue that avenue working with people because I enjoy it so much. I think if I wasn't in music um, and or uh, writing books, I think I would have been a teacher because I, I so enjoy children. I mean, I really truly do. It's something that I just love how their little minds work. And I feel like I'm kind of a little bit of a kid myself. I'll never truly grow up. And I like seeing things from that point of view. And so um, anyway, and I think that's why with my children, you know, they support me because they say, you know, they see that, you know, you never, you never give up. You keep dreaming, you keep going, you know? And um, so, and I love the fact that, you know, my kids now are, you know, well, two or older. And of course I have my little man who's seven, uh, my daughter, Annalisa, who's in the arts and everything, um, watching her 
you know, do coffee house at the school or um, performing things. It's, it's really awesome to see. And that's nothing by no means what I have pushed ever <laughs> because it's not the easiest life, but um, you know, you, I, I absolutely believe in her and like Mary, your children are absolutely unbelievably talented and I just can't believe their new song out and, and hopefully we'll have stuff together possibly in the future as well. I know. So um, it's just exciting. It's a very exciting process. We, then, we, so what is, if, go ahead. if you had to give someone advice um, that's starting out as a singer songwriter or an artist or a, or a writer, what would that be? Now, I, I want to just give a shout out to a very, to a local um, author here. His name's Meshach and he wrote a book called, drowning in own tears i mean his story is phenomenal this guy was standing on the street corner literally literally with a sign saying you know here's my email address can you help me publish the book and this guy oh. worked religiously on his own i mean he became his own best fan as i call it um and he's now become a national best-selling author because a publisher approached him and said if you can get i think it was something like um 20,000 likes and you know if you can work your way up to becoming a, a, a national best-selling author we'll sign a deal with you and this guy wow. just blew his trumpet you know on twitter he just did it relentlessly and he reached his goal a few days ago it's like wow that is amazing i love that that is just beautiful and that's that's a person who has that inner strength like i said it's you know, even if you don't have everybody around you to cheer you on, it's that inner strength that makes you continue to do and be the creative person you are. You know, and I and I, I think that is something for a lot, all young writers and artists, um, whether it's books or music or, mu or, you know, playing in a band and whatever, it, you have to absolutely ultimately love it. And if that has to be the one thing that you, you know, you dream about because um, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work and people don't realize, you know, that with the, and at the end of the day, if you make it to, well, whatever making it is anyway today, um, but let's say mainstream pop or country, um, it's a great responsibility. And that's the thing with like a lot of the TV shows I think that are out there that kind of portray a false sense of what is, um, you know, getting these deals and the, at the end of the day, these reality shows that just show the glamour of it. But the behind the scenes, um, you know, it's a lot more than sometimes people are realizing. And, um, but not to be discouraged if that's truly your thing and truly what you want to do, then continue to do it. But I really do think that, um, you, you, I don't, I, how would I put this? I really just think that if you, yeah, if you're an artist and you want that and you want it, then go out and do it. I just don't think that a lot of people should base it off of programs that are on TV that kind of glorify the, you know, the frou-frou of all of it as, as I would put um, it's hard work it's it's hard work it's it's like writing is I always say writing is the easiest part of uh, it all uh, you know when you're getting published as a writer uh, an author it writing is the easiest part everything else is hard, hard work yeah it is and but that's the thing it's it's hard work but at the same time if you really truly love it then you love it's it, not, it, it yeah. it's, it's not work it, it is but it's not but I think a lot of young kids out there, like, um, you know, they just see the, the TV part of it. You know, they see those reality shows and they just think, oh, you know, but that's, it's great to want to be on those shows. But at the same time, you have to be the best you can be. And you can be discovered anywhere, really. I mean, you don't have to be on one of those shows. And I guess that's my point, really. Um, there's so many people who try, you know, to become famous so to say but i i feel like i've been famous i mean i haven't never been on a, a you know a pop chart or country chart um you know i've done some indie stuff um but the thing is the festivals and the and the performances and traveling and 
uh, to me, I mean, I've played in front of, you know, 35,000 people before. I've sang, I've opened for my mother all over the world. I've done my own shows, you know. I mean, I performed open for Jewel from long ago, Bonnie Raitt, um, you know, the Indigo Girls. I've done festivals, you know. I mean, and that was on my own. And that was just, you know, my sister and I, uh, you know, we had our group together. We performed everywhere. And so to me, I feel like I've made it. <laughs> Although, you know, everybody, you know, just if you're not on a billboard or on the front cover of, you know, magazine, um, but that's not necessarily true. And I think that's another message I'd love to tell, you know, younger people in this, you know, making it there's there's a million ways to make it, you know, I mean, and I know people very happy who are performing out locally or they, they book their own tours around the country and they're they make you know, a great living and they're, they have really no desire to be, you know, that person on the charts, but they have a huge following that, you know, technology has brought to us that we now can, uh, you know, use. That's such a wonderful thing. So making it is whatever it is that truly makes you happy, really. Um, and I guess I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. <laughs> I love that, you know, technology has leveled the playing field almost, you know, so it's no longer just, um, you know, you don't have to be an elitist for want of a better word to be able right. to get ahead in show business or as an author or whatever it is you want to do. The playing field has been leveled. You can, you don't have to have anything except the desire and the will to succeed. Yes, exactly. I mean, and I think, I think a lot of times, I mean, uh, when it comes to songwriting, especially, um, well, hopefully it'll all get changed around eventually, you know, with the publishing issues and things like that with technology that has kind of been a little bit of an issue, you know, with what artists are getting paid and the writers, you know, like myself, I mean, I have, I actually have people out there singing my songs currently right now and you know i don't receive anything really from that um and the best that most people will tell you is well at least your music's getting is out there and and you can look at that as yeah it's true but i mean it would not be nice you know to be creative and be able to you know in turn make some money would be nice <laughs> even though most artists are just thinking about as i get to perform or i get to do this but you know, you also have to survive in this unfortunately material world. <laughs> you still, you still got to pay the rent, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, but um, I mean, I think you know, it's it's one of those things where it's technology still is working itself out with many things, especially when it comes to um, songwriters, and you know, uh, I think it'll see its way through at some point um, to make it where it's at least fair <laughs> if you're putting in the effort. And I always think of it this way. I mean, a lot of people don't realize too that a lot of these mega stars, you know, they're not writing their songs, but so many people do not know that. And they think, oh, well, that person's writing their songs and that's really their story. It's all these people that are in the shadows that are writing these songs. And unfortunately they're the ones who sometimes get discounted which I, I just feel so strongly that people should really know that, you know, these are the guys that are making these artists happen. I mean, if without that song, that artist may not be number one, you know, and right. I just think it's really important for writers to be acknowledged um, a heck of a lot more. And I love what's one thing in country I do appreciate. Um, I'm not necessarily a huge um country fan i do like some country music but the artists typically will actually credit and say at their award ceremonies they'll actually credit the writer unless there's just too many which that happens sometimes but if it's just the one writer or two writers they'll say and thank you for this song and i love that in the pop world that does not happen but um they you know just would like people continue thinking that they're the ones who write all the music <laughs> Uh, but um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Leila. I do want to connect you with um, with a guy called Carlos Phoenix. Oh yeah, um, you know she, he's. Yeah. I definitely want to connect you with him because he's all about making sure that artists 
get paid for their work, you know, whatever it is that they do. So he works with um, creatives to ensure that, you know, when their music or whatever is used out there, that they get reimbursed for their efforts. Because, you know, like you say, just getting your name out there doesn't pay the bills. Right. Exactly. Oh, thank you. No, I would appreciate it. Please definitely message me his information. I would love to speak with him. Um, I actually have several CDs that came out um, overseas. I was working with um, a producer over there um, for a while, uh, about, you know, 10 years ago. And um, and now there's my my some of my music is out there and I'm receiving, you know, no royalty. And um, when I went to go to, you know, speak to some people about it, they're like, well, by the time, you know, you sue and you do this, I mean, it's really not even worth it. But at the same time, you're thinking, well, th but that's my song, <laughs> you know, um, it's just interesting. I've actually had people send me links of stuff where they're hearing my music play. And it, it just it's amazing because you almost feel even though you wrote that song that you have no right. And um, it's very strange. It's very bizarre. But that's I've, I've really taken control of a lot of stuff now um, through just different, you know, groups that I found. And I, I, I'm definitely growing more and more wise to what I can do. But I would love any additional help or information. That would be fantastic. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Carlos is a great guy, and and he is all about making sure that artists get rewarded. How can people connect with you on social media, Layla? Well, I'm on um, Facebook under Layla Heyman, and I am on um, Instagram under Layla Music, and on Twitter at Layla Music. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It was awesome getting to know you a little bit better. And we'd love to have you back some, some time again in the future. And hopefully the tech gremlins will leave us alone then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And anybody who would like to reach out after hearing, um, you know, this show, um, they can feel free to, you know, uh, message me. I'm especially on Instagram a lot. So that's Layla, at Layla Music. And uh, please reach out and I would love to hear from you. Any young artists who, you know, want to talk or get together or meet up. I mean, I'm in Nashville, but I do go places and travel. So or if you want to just, you know, if there's a question you have to ask or anything about what you're doing in your life, um, I, I, you know, I can try to help you the best I can. And I would really appreciate hearing from you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It was lovely having you on the show. Thank you for everyone who joined us today. Thanks, Layla. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Bye, Mary. Bye. Bye, honey. Thank Bye. You so much. Bye. Bye.